Lucas has two points, Dair has one, Jendo, Licious, one, Teo, one, Hema, one, Anna, one, and Monica has one. So you guys have to catch up if you want to beat Jesus. Okay, so we're going to be doing our, this is week nine of our Son of Man series. Today's title in Babel, Babylon. We're going to be spending the next few weeks, uh, I'm thinking about maybe four or five more weeks, reading through uh, the first uh, seven chapters of uh, the book of Daniel. So if you haven't already and you're, you're at home, turn your Bible to the, uh, to the book of Daniel. We'll be reading from chapter one tonight. All right, let's get started. Uh, okay, so before we start reading, let's get, just get some stuff out of the way about Daniel and also why we're doing this. So I'll just read what I wrote. It says, we started off this class with the question as to why did Jesus regularly refer to himself as the Son of Man? If you remember, that was the starting thing. Jesus, you know, people, including us today, we'll call him Messiah or Christ, uh, which Christ just means Messiah. Uh, but Jesus didn't refer to himself as Christ or Messiah. He always referred to himself as Son of Man. So we ask, why did he call himself the Son of Man and where did he get that from? So to understand why he's calling himself the Son of Man, uh, we need to read Daniel chapter 7, which we did, but to understand that chapter uh, fully, we need to read the six preceding chapters before that. And of course, before reading those chapters, we had to, and we did, read uh, select stories from the Hebrew Bible that help build up images and vocabulary that will be used throughout the book of Daniel. So hope that makes sense. That And I, I have a little chart. So here we go. We start in the Hebrew Bible, go. And now we're in Daniel chapters 1 through 6. We'll do that and then get to Daniel chapter 7, which will lead us to Jesus, the gospel accounts of Jesus. So that's just the, the timeline that we're looking at. That's like a little roadmap. Um, as we read through Daniel, we'll be paying close attention to the specific imagery used that is purposely meant, purposefully meant to make the reader recall earlier stories from the Hebrew Bible. So as we, uh, and I'll just read this, let us work together as a group to identify these callbacks and the importance and meanings of the words. So as we go through, there's going to be a lot of images and there's going to be a lot of specific wording that's supposed to make you recall and think about past stories we've already, you know, we spent the past, what, eight weeks reading about. So um, as I read these out loud, make uh, as I read the chapter out loud with you guys, uh, make sure you put it in the chat, you know, if you recall something, if something, you know, is a callback. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this will be the last slide, and then we'll go read the uh, chapter. I just want to show you the uh, the format of this book. So, first of all, the book of Daniel is very, very unique book in terms of structure, and I'm talking about not just the Bible, which is the Bible itself, all books in it are really unique and really uh, well crafted. But I'm just talking about books in general, novels and stories in general. Uh, why? Well, look at this. Chapter chapter 1 and chapters 8 through 12, so the first chapter and the last four chapters, are written in Hebrew, while chapters 2 through 7, the middle chapters, are written in Aramaic. So as you can see, I have a little chart right here. Chapter 1, Hebrew. Middle chapters, Aramaic. Last chapters, Hebrew. So my question for you guys is, and that's really interesting, like how many times do we stumble upon a book and you have to be able to understand English and Russian to f like actually read it? Uh, it's we don't see that this is really this is a really weird thing that they uh, that Daniel did um, So my question for you guys is what might be the importance and the choice of using dual languages and using both Hebrew and Aramaic languages? Um, I'd like to see if anybody could guess that and we'll you know speculate and talk about that um, Please put your answers down into the comments and I'll give you a point if it's a reasonable answer let me know if anything uh, pops up for it. So what what might be the importance in using two languages in the same book? Really interesting. Anybody got an idea? You don't have to get the right answer. We're gonna try, I wanna try to work on this together as a group. Um, dang, nothing yet? No. Dang, are we still having, uh, is it still kind of small? 10, yeah. Dang, dude. Uh, Hema, uh, or Hema said yeah. they can express what they mean better, and Josh said different meanings slash interpretations. It's different meanings slash what? Interpretations. Interpretations? Yeah. Uh, that could be one, uh, but um, there's something very, very big that um, we're looking at, and 
you know, I think you need to know you, to get this, you'd have to just get a little bit of a uh, understanding of the history of the uh, Israelites. Uh, where we're at right now, oh, <laughs> you trying to fix that up? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, where we're at right now in the book of Daniel is this is a time when uh, the people, the Israelites, have been exiled from Israel and are, most of them, the majority of them, are working, living as in, uh, enslaved people, as captured people in Babylon. They will eventually make it out of Babylon and return back to their homeland. So, yeah. Uh, Monica added, were they written at different times? I'm just curious when all the chapters were written and how, when they were pieced together. This was composed uh, on their return back uh, to Israel out of Babylonian captivity. Um, and then, so, so could you actually read that? Uh, she said, were they written at different times? Oh. I'm just curious when all the chapters were written and how, when they were pieced together. Uh, from what we understand, this book was composed, you know, close to the same time. It wasn't written over a long span of years, close uh, in a close period. Uh, and like I said, this was written uh, after, not during the events were happening, way after the, these events happened. And Elena said, possibly to reach different people. And Tasha said, probably because they were in a different country. Okay, so Tasha, uh, Natasha has uh, a point on that one. That's going to be a key one right there. The fact that they were in a different country. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I don't have Natasha in here yet. I'm going to put her right over here. Um, and not necessarily to reach um, other people in this time of, uh, you know, the Israelite timeline. And for most of the Israelite timeline also. They're not really uh, making an effort to uh, give the word of God to other nations. They're, for you know, most of the Old Testament, they keep it to themselves. And this would be at the same kind of time. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now. So think of it. So look at Hebrew, which is their native, their home language. That's what they want to speak. They're Aramaic. That's not their language. That's, uh, that's the language of their captors. And Hebrew again at the end. So... Let's look at it as if the timeline of the Israelite people, it reflects the timeline of, of the Israelite people. Free, freedom, enslavement, freedom. It's represented by the languages that are being expressed. At the beginning, they're free. They speak their Hebrew language. They're enslaved, speaking their captor's language. They're free again, speaking again their Hebrew language. Um, I hope that makes sense. Is there anything, other comments that popped up? Okay, cool. All right, so let's uh, continue. So Natasha, you I give you a point because you're right on the money with that. Um, oh, I'm gonna keep it right here. So like I said, I hope you have your Bibles open to Daniel chapter one. We're gonna be reading that first chapter, and then uh, I'm gonna read it. Hmm. Yeah, I'll read most. I'll read select pieces. We're gonna read through the eventually by the end of the tonight. But let's just start. It says, uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, came or sorry, king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. That would be right here, this time, this time when they're free, and now they're coming into this timeline. Um, and the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia, and put in the treasure house, put it, and put it in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered. Eshaphaz, uh, king of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family, and we'll talk about that later, and nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the languages and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table, they were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen um, were some from Judah, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, uh, Eshaya, Esharia. Oh, man, how do you say that? Isaiah, I think. Man, sorry about that. Uh, the chief officials gave them new names to Daniel, the name Belshazzar, Ananiah, Shadrach, Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Um, we'll stop right there. Okay, so um, like uh, to people who might just be popping up, 
I do want to say uh, that as we read through this, if there are things that make you, that are callbacks to the stories we've been reading for the past eight weeks, please put them up in the comments. Um, if you don't, if no one puts them up, I'll just say it in general. But let's look back at this. I like the idea of this isn't too much to the story, but this is just uh, some theology, some understanding about God. And I love how Daniel writes this, that you know they were put into captivity, but look how it's worded. Verse two, the Lord delivered uh, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand. The idea that God was in complete control of this, and he allowed this to happen. I just, that's a really interesting way to look at it. Um, when bad things happen, uh, when something like this would happen, it's easy and it's our human nature to uh, believe and to assume that God must not be present or God must not care or maybe God doesn't even exist. But Daniel takes full knowledge that God uh, allows all things to happen and is perfect and good timing. So he writes it, the Lord delivered him to the king. Interesting. Uh, anything else popping up in the comments right now? Okay. Uh, let's see. I also want to look further on at verse 2. It says, so I'll just read a little bit. It says that um, he delivered into his hand along with some of the articles of the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia. Your guys' Bibles might have a note on there that might say that Babylonia or in Hebrew would say Shinar. So think back a few weeks ago. Uh, maybe four to five weeks, I'm not sure. And think back, uh, this will be all the way back in our, uh, when we're reading through Genesis. When has uh, Babylonia or the Valley of Shinar appeared? What instance or what story was that in? When the Valley of Shinar appeared or another translation would be Babylonia. There's a very important story that we read through about that took place in the Valley of Shinar or in Babylonia. Um, yeah, I, I need that question actually to be answered um, so we can move on to the next question. Anybody got anything for that? Okay. Um, give you maybe a few seconds just to think about that. Anna said tower. Oh, okay. Anna, you get the point, actually. That's exactly where it is. Good, Very good job on that one. And Hema said when they were building the tower. Yeah, I'll give it to both of you guys. Dang, catching up. No. <laughs> so um, this is really important. The uh, Daniel, who is the writer of this, wants you to recall, hey, remember the Tower of Babel? This is all taking place once again at the, the location where the Tower of Babel was built. The Tower of Babel was bad news, and it was so bad that God had to uh, disrupt it and to scatter the people. Well, once again, the people, the, the people that once resided there have come back together, and they're starting something new. Yeah. I just realized it might be a little delayed for some people, depending on the internet, uh, but Eunice and uh, Vanessa also got it. I'm Tower. just going to give it to them because I'm happy they're getting it. Yeah, Tower of Babel. So Eunice is tied with you now. No. And uh, Vanessa? Just kidding. Take it back. <laughs> Vanessa? Yeah, Vanessa. Is it with uh, one S or two S's? Two. Okay. Very good, guys. I'm really glad that you guys uh, caught that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, verse 3. Then the king ordered Ephaphaz, Ephaphaz, uh, who was the chief of his court officials to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites. And our translations, most of our translations, I'm sure, uh, will read from, where do you take it from? From the royal family and nobility. Uh, in Hebrew, the word would be seed. Where has seed been used in the past? It's used a lot throughout the Bible, but let's think about um, some stories that we have specifically read about in uh, the Hebrew Bible. Think back in Genesis. Think back from our very er, much earlier classes. Where was talk about a seed specific? Anna said garden. Yeah. Good job, Anna. Um, and um, Anna said seed of man. Yeah. Um, seed of the woman, actually. Uh, seed of the woman. Uh, the seed of the woman is, the, is going to come the line that is going to be able to defeat the snake. And so when you read the seed once again, oh yeah. Hema said when we will be eating the seeds. Mm, when we'll be eating the seeds? When we will be eating the seeds. I'm not too sure what that one means. Me either. And <laughs> Monica said animus really want, need that toilet paper. Guillermo <laughs> got a seed of a woman. Who, Monica said that? Guillermo. Guillermo? Okay. He's still Guillermo. G U I G U I L L E R M O. That's yeah. Loopy, by the way. 
Yeah. <laughs> I remember you said Gmo. Guillermo was like, uh, yeah. and the fact they kept on saying Guillermo, Guillermo was like, oh, that must not be Gmo. Yeah. I know. Uh, Guillermo, I know, has a usually gets some good answers in here, anyways. So it made sense it was him. Um, but yeah, so it's from not the royal family, but the royal seed. Um, and, sorry. I think. Yeah. Uh, him, I just clarified. Like when we are supposed to eat seeds, but turn to me because we sin. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you. A, this is a future point. Uh, this doesn't. This isn't necessarily what we're referring to right now, but it's gonna refer to what we're gonna read later. Okay, Emma. No. <laughs> oh, I'm already. You already been passed up by Anna. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> did, was Monica the one that said she must want that toilet paper? I need that toilet paper. Yeah. Um. So. As a Israelite reader, which is the um, the target audience, that was the audience that, that you know this book was specifically written for. Um, it's supposed to be a big thing when it reads that it's taken from the royal seed because they, uh, you know, according to the Bible, the royal seed is the one that has con been continuing from Eve. So from that seed, there's supposed to come the snake crusher, the one that will defeat sin. And it looks like this evil king, who uh, we will call uh, Nebuchadnezzar, has just taken from them, which might sound like a defeat. Okay, I'm going to go on to this next one. In verse 4, the members of the royal seed that were taken are described as youths, so young men, without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in wisdom. With these descriptive words, what do these young men remind you of? Once again, let's go back to Genesis. They were without blemish, they were good in appearance, and skillful in all wisdom. Let's see, and I just want to get to there also, but um, first person to get that, let's see. Without blemish, good in appearance, and skillful in wisdom, what do, what do these descriptive words of the young men remind you of? Go back to Genesis. Oops. Marco Torres said saints, and Anna Bracken said men before the fall. Uh, wait, who was the first one? Marco Torres. The Marco Torres. I don't know who that is. What's up? Um, shout out to Marco Torres. I'm not sure who you are, but um, so the saints. That would be uh, incorrect on this one. Let's let's go back to Genesis. And what did Anna say? Men before the fall, and Elena said God's creation. Uh. So uh, I'm not gonna reward any points on this one. Uh, you were, you guys are correct on like the, the before the fall idea. This is immediately right before the fall. Uh, let's look at Genesis chapter six. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. I must have angels? No, Which so is, it's described, it's the fruit. Yeah. It's the forbidden fruit. Yeah. Uh, because it looked good, it was without blemish, and they saw that it, or it was skillful, skillful in all wisdom, or as uh, Eve saw it, it was useful in gaining wisdom. Do you guys see these um, these words are used, being used to make us think directly of the Eve moment? Keep what hap what's happening is that King Nebuchadnezzar is playing a fall moment where he's taking something that doesn't belong to him, just as Eve she saw and she took, and it just so happens that you know it's different. It's not fruit. It's young men but in, uh, they're described in the same way. So the author, Daniel, wants us to see that this is a reenactment of what was happening in Genesis chapter 3, right before the fall. Okay, anything else in there? Monica says she said that, but nobody heard her. Oh, uh, sorry. I still give it to it. I know Monica doesn't lie that much. Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay. So, King Nabo, uh, Nebuchadnezzar changes their names. Uh, let's continue reading, though. Uh, I'm just going to start up verse 4. You know, the young men, they were without physical defect. They were handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. They were to learn the language and literature of the Babylonians. So they're learning uh, not their own culture, but the Babylonian culture, their captive's culture. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. 
They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. And who was it that was actually taken? It was three individuals. Or, well, sorry. Um, there was multiple individuals, but this book highlights four of them. And who do we have? We have Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Azariah. Um, and the king, will, uh, the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, will actually change their names. But let's look at this. The young men have awesome, God-honoring names, but the king changes their names in a total act to exhort his authority. Uh, so I just put these out. This is their names, how it translates in English. This is what their name actually means in Hebrew. So Daniel, uh, Daniel's name is God is my judge, which is a very helpful thing. In the, uh, the ancient times, you want the judge to be on your side just as you want God to be on your side. Your judge is your protector because if you're just and you're right, you know, if you're in the just, if you are right, the judge is going to protect you, or at least a good judge will. So Daniel's saying, God is my judge. God is my protector. God will deliver me from uh, evil people, from people that, you know, break the laws and stuff. Hananiah, God has been gracious. Awesome. He's, that's what his name means, that God has been gracious to us. Mishael, who is like God. It's like a, what would you say? Uh, what do you call those kind of questions? A rhetorical question. Who is like God? Obviously no one. There is no one like God. That's what Mishael's name means. Who is like God? And Azariah, God has helped. Um, Azariah's name meaning, who is my helper? God, God has helped me. Um, you could also see just in the names, this is just a little bit of Hebrew, but just how their names are, you see here Daniel, L, you hear the L in Daniel, and Mishael, and then we have Hananiah, uh, Azariah. Uh. Whenever you read names, especially Hebrew names, and they have an L sound or a uh sound, it means something to do with God. Uh, because remember, God's name in full in Hebrew is Yahweh Elohim. So you hear the L for Daniel, uh, Elohim, Mishael, El, and Hananiah, Yahweh, eh? Azariah, uh, Yahweh. All right, so that's just the idea right there. What do we got? Nessa said Mishael. Mishael, yeah. I, I, I was, I've always been wondering about that, but I'm too lazy to Google it sometimes. Same. <laughs> so let's look at uh, the Babylonian names in here. First off, let's look at Nebuchadnezzar's. Uh, what does Nebuchadnezzar's name mean? It means uh, Nebo, protector servant. Nebo is the Babylonian uh, god. Um, so Nebuchadnezzar's name means the Babylonian god is going to protect me. Well, they get their names changed. So Daniel goes to Belshazzar, which means to protect the life of the king, which will be Nebuchadnezzar. Hananiah's name gets changed to the Shadrach, which means at the command of Aku, and Aku is one of the other gods in uh, the Babylonian uh, religion. Mishael's name gets changed to Mishayak, which means who is what Aku is. So they're saying who is like our god. No one is, that's what they're trying to say. And Azariah's name gets changed to Abednego, which means servant of Nebo. And I should have made an extra slide for this, but so I'm just gonna go back and forth. So Daniel's name goes from God is my judge, which is God is my protector, to I am the protector of the life of the king now. Once God was protecting me, now I have to protect this other guy. Hananiah's name goes from God has been gracious to now I am at the command of Aku. I am Aku's servant now. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Yeah. Can you get a don't touch that mouse? Don't touch that mouse. I'll give my brother a point for that. All right, um, Mishael's name, which is who is like God, gets changed to who is what Aku is. The same exact thing, but now just talking about different gods. And last one, uh, Azariah's name gets changed from God has helped to the servant of Nabu. So once again, God has been my helper. Now I am the helper of Nabu. You guys see how this is direct. These names were chosen purposefully. It was to change you know, what their names meant and to how God has helped them and how God has protected them and gracious to them to now we have to help these Babylonian people and these Babylonian gods and kings. We have to serve them. We have to protect them. All right. Anything else going on? No? All right. The names are super important. Um, and I want, you know, I'm just going to say this. Uh, yeah. Actually, Monica posted the uh, meaning of missiles or missile. Mm. Uh, the meaning of Misael is who is what God is. 
Oh, okay, so it's just Mishael. Yeah. So it's... Missile's Mishael. Yeah, I guess it makes sense because in Spanish you'd, probably, you'd pronounce it Mishael. Yeah, so Missile's name, Missile's is the Spanish version of Mishael. That's cool. So, Monica, you're going to get another point for that, for doing your research. And uh, how do you spell Missile's name? I always spell it wrong. Uh, it's Mishael without an H? No, Missile's. <laughs> M-I-S-A-E-L. In... Yeah. That's it. And I'm going to give him a point for being alive. Um, being alive with that name. It's the same, but without the H. Oh, without, that's what you're trying to say? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so naming conventions. Naming is super important in ancient worlds, and we talked, or sorry, ancient, uh, the ancient world. And uh, we talked about this in our, la our two series, two series ago, when we were in Genesis, once again. Um, and we talked a little about in this one also, that Adam was, um, God commanded Adam to give all the animals names. It's an exercise of what? Someone put that in there. It's an exercise of what? In the ancient world, when you name someone something else, it's showing your what? It's an exercise of what? I'd like to see if someone could give us that. Nothing yet? All right. Anna said, Anna said authority. That's right. Dang, Anna really does want that toilet paper. And Victoria said, give a point to Missile's mom. I already gave Missile a point. Uh, and Eunice said authority, and Monica said power over them. Yeah, so I'll give it to them. Dang. Monica and Eunice are right behind Anna. Dang it. All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Jesus, you got trailed in the dust. Long gone. All right, anyways. Um... Yeah, it's a, sh it's a show of authority. And look at the authority that Nebuchadnezzar is exerting over uh, these four Israelites. First off, he captured, a, a, he put all these people in captivity. He changed their names. He changed their names to the exact opposite of what their names used to mean. And on top of that, he's having them uh, eat his Babylonian food and learn his, about his Babylonian culture. So it's a definite a definite uh, show of his authority over these people because once again these aren't just any people also these are from the royal seed this is from the royal family members and he's doing it to them all right anything else no all right um okay so those are what their names ch are changed to super important let's look at verse eight it says but daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused, which I, I highlighted myself, that God does this. God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink, uh, who, or sorry, I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see, why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age. The king would have my head because of you. And Daniel then said to the guard, whom the chief officials had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, Azariah, please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. Okay, so I uh, wrote down, Daniel asks if he and his friends could have a different diet than what was appointed. Uh, it doesn't say what they're eating, but uh, it should be obvious uh, that it's, uh, would you say, it's uh, non-kosher, uh, which is the diet that God does not want his Israelite people to be eating. Um, so the translation reads, oh, so here's the thing. He asks specifically in verse 12, give us nothing but vegetables to eat. Uh, that's what our translations reads, but instead, uh, if it gets closer to the Hebrew that was originally used, it should read something closer to pulse vegetables, which just means vegetables, uh, sorry, I quote without seeds, with seeds, vegetables with seeds. What does this diet remind you of? And yeah. The Original Foods of the Garden by Anna Bracken. Very good. And Elena said vegan. Nah. All right, well, Anna already got <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, supposed to make you think of what was originally planned for uh, for God, for just people in general. 
they were supposed to be eating seed bearing vegetables and seed bearing uh fruits yeah monica said baby food that does remind you of baby food <laughs> uh yeah if I'm, okay i like it though K- guillermo said tacos <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay I almost spit out my You guys almost killed, uh, Guillermo, you almost killed Jesus. He was, like, choking on his Gatorade right now. Oh, boy. So, yeah, that's exactly what we're supposed to be making you think of. We're supposed to be thinking, once again, this is the idea that Daniel is being put into a Garden of Eden kind of, kind of setting. Um, and what I mean by that? Well, first off, remember, he and his friends were described as the forbidden fruit, and Nebuchadnezzar failed his test. Nebuchadnezzar is going to have a few tests in here. Um, and Nebuchadnezzar failed his first test just like how Eve failed her test where Nebuchadnezzar took something that you know looked good and looked like it would uh, give wisdom but it wasn't his to take same thing with Eve um, now you could, uh, the idea is you're supposed to be seeing that Daniel is putting himself into a Garden of Eve like setting where he is requesting the diet that was for that God intended for humans originally uh, so he makes this deal you know, if we look better, if we're in better shape than the, uh, the people eating the Babylonian diet after 10 days, then let us continue eating these vegetables. Let us continue eating this uh, diet. If not, we'll eat your diet, the Babylonian diet. So verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead, or pulse vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them. 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Very awesome. That's what we, uh, that's the last part we'll be reading tonight. Uh, that's actually pretty much all I got prepared for you guys. Um, so we, I think we have maybe a minute or two just like just to uh, put some questions or anything. About what time, what time is it anyway? 7.42. So we got some time. I do have some announcements to make, though. But, yeah, we got some time just for any comments or questions. Um, the book of Daniel is really, really interesting. We're only going to be reading straight through the first seven chapters. The reason for that is because chapters 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, the last uh, chapters, um, are kind of hard to read in a group setting because it's about very specific prophecies that do actually come true. We will discuss them. Uh, when the time comes, but we won't be reading through all those chapters, but we'll be reading through Daniel's, uh, Daniel chapters 1 through 7. 1 through 6 is the lead up to chapter 7. Uh, questions or comments, snarks, concerns, conundrums? What do you guys have? I'm bummed I didn't get the toilet paper. <laughs> um, Anna, you're making uh, Jesus sad that he's not going to get the toilet paper? Good thing we didn't... Um... Commit to delivering it. She lives too far. Oh, true. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Not yet. All right. Um, well, let me read to you guys what the points are, though. So we have Missile, Ryan, my brother, Yermo, Vanessa, Natasha, uh, Taya, Chendo, and Dair. You guys all have one point, which I'm very surprised. Natasha, you came like with like five points last week or something. Six points, maybe. So... Step up your game. For real. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. And then we got uh, Hema with, oh, Hema and Jesus tying, getting three points. And then we got Monica and Eunice tied for second place. Anna in first place. Good job. Uh, anything else pop up? No questions. Okay. Um, well, then I guess we'll end the study right there. We'll be, re- I think we're going to read Daniel's chapter two and four, or sorry, two and three, maybe next week, maybe just Daniel chapter two. Uh, the story gets really, really interesting. Nebuchadnezzar is a very interesting character in general. Um, sometimes it's pretty funny, just what he does with his actions. Anyways, uh, okay, so announcements. Uh, let's see, the first announcement that I got to put is uh, anybody that's in listening right now, 
Uh, I suggest you guys get the the app uh, House Party. It's a cool app just to stay connected with all, uh, all of us. Uh, I've sent it to some of you guys and I know a lot of people are using it right now. I use it all the time. It's just a way to face chat with each other, the video face chat with each other. Uh, the other announcement though um, was Monica asked me to ask, say, oh, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you download, download the North County Church of Christ app. Um, yeah, just make sure you get that one. Um, there's a lot of things you could do with it. And it's going, as time continues, uh, we're going to be putting more stuff. Well, by we, I think that mostly is Jesus. We'll be putting more stuff on the website. Um, and there's even a tab for our specific ministry, the Young Adults Ministry. Uh, and I think through there, we'll have our resources, the videos I've been making, uh, the videos that Jesus and I have been making. And I think maybe these ones, maybe some, some of them might be up there. So... You know, it's going to grow as time progresses. Um, do you think there's any other announcements I need to make, Jesus? Or could you think of anything else? No. No? Okay. Think. Oh, Food Bank. Okay, talk uh, about, like, I don't know this. So Lee is putting together a food bank that we've been doing. You guys have helped out um, this past week. And so just be on the lookout for that. I know we'll be sending out texts, I'm, I'm sure. And... Um, if you guys can help out and pass out or like go deliver food to people's houses, that'd be great. Just look out for that text for this weekend. Do you know, I, I'm kind of curious about this. Oh, someone got a question or, okay. I got a question about this and maybe you can answer it. Um, do you know if when we, uh, when we give for our offering, mm -hmm. do, if we do, if we donate to the general fund, does some of that go to the food bank or how does that work out? Uh, last time... I checked the food bank was on donation it was like donation basis so like people would donate food um, but I think it was kind of slow last week so that might change I don't know we'd have to confirm okay so we're not too sure on that but one. as far as I know um, it's donations right now and Monica said just text her if you want to deliver okay do, you, do we know when the next delivery date will be I believe Saturday okay and also, do we have a time for that, Monica? Does... And she said no. She'll, she'll, if you want to deliver, just text her. She'll give you more info. And she said no, the general fund does not go to the food bank. Okay. Well, thanks for clarifying that. I wasn't sure myself. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll Call ask... each other. Text each other. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Or People who... party, house party with each other. Yeah. If you don't normally um, talk to someone, text them. Instagram, DM them. I don't know. Yeah. Encourage each other. MySpace message. MySpace message. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me think. Let me think. I think I want to ask one more question, but I can't think of it right now. Hmm. Well, I lost it. I'll come back with it later. Oh, did you guys hear the news about that um, Anarka, that there's not a single uh, like a case? What was that? Sorry. Oh. That in Antarctica, there hasn't been a single case of uh, the coronavirus there. And does anybody know why? I mean, I was kind of shocked when I learned about it, but I was like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, Antarctica doesn't have a single case of coronavirus, and the reason behind that is because they are isolated. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. So uh, I think we could close it off from there. See you guys. All right, guys. Bye.